Basketball is a physical sport, and a grueling 82-game schedule jammed in five months takes a toll on players' bodies. Injuries are a part of the game, but with the advancement of medicine, technology, and sports science, we don't see many career-ending injuries as we did before. In this video, we'll go over players whose prime was cut short due to health reasons. Here are the greatest NBA careers ruined by injuries. Yao Ming from the moment he came to the NBA League, Yao was its most famous player. In terms of quantity of fans, nobody except him had a country of a billion people following his every step. Selected with the first pick in the 2002 draft, Yao did not disappoint. Apart from being 7'6", Ming had skills for days. He could handle, he could shoot it from the outside, and for most of his shots, there was nothing any defensive player could do. In his prime, you could count that the Great Wall of China will give you an efficient 25 and 10, along with two blocks. However, three separate foot fractures were too much, and have robbed him of tangible playoff success. Yao tried and kept coming back, but his feet couldn't endure supporting his gigantic frame up and down the floor. He retired at the age of 30 and is still considered a global basketball icon. If his lower extremities held up, Yao would be one of the best centers ever because you simply couldn't guard a 7'6 guy with a smooth jumper. Jay Williams Younger NBA fans may know Williams as an analyst on ESPN. Before he started debating with Jalen Rose and Stephen A. Smith, Jay Williams was a ball player and then some. Jay is considered to be one of the best basketball players in the history of Duke University. He won the National Freshman of the Year award in 2000, and in 2001, he led the Blue Devils to an NCAA championship as a leading scorer in the country. As a junior, he deservedly won both Naismith and Wooden Player of the Year, after which he declared for the NBA draft and got selected with the number two pick by the Chicago Bulls. Jay Will had an inconsistent but promising rookie year, averaging 9.5 points and 4.7 assists in 26 minutes on the floor. In the offseason, Williams was training hard to become one of the better NBA point guards in his second year. However, the second season would never happen. Williams bought a motorcycle, a Yamaha that had 160 miles per hour top speed. He crashed it on June 19, 2003, and broke his pelvis, ACL, and damaged nerves in his leg. His basketball career was over after that, and he will forever remain one of the biggest what could have been stories. Grant Hill. Another Dookie, Grant Hill won two NCAA championships with the Blue Devils in 91 and 92. He was selected third overall in the 1994 draft, and his dominance translated from college game to the NBA. He won co-rookie of the year with Jason Kidd, averaging 19.9 points, 6.4 rebounds, and five assists per game, and even made the all-star team as a rookie. Even though he wasn't much of an outside shooter, nobody was stopping Hill from getting to the rim. He was also a phenomenal playmaker, and until he got injured, he averaged pip like numbers of 22 points, 8 rebounds, and 6.3 assists per game. Then in 2000, Grant got injured before the playoffs. It was not a bad ankle injury per se, but in the era 20 years before load management, players were taught to suck it up and play through the pain. This proved to be an awful decision, and Hill messed up his ankle completely. He played only 47 games in the next four years, and many believed his career might be over. Hill did manage to recover and play until the age of 40, but he never reached the flashy, rim-rattling level of play he once possessed. Tracy McGrady NBA players enter their prime around the age of 28. Still at their physical peak, with the mind caught up, most NBA greats start thriving past the age of 25. Jordan won his first chip at 28, and so did LeBron and Shaq. In the case of Tracy McGrady, by the time he was 28, he was playing his last good season in the league. Brian McGrady was an offensive juggernaut and could not be stopped. Six foot nine, skilled, athletic, a good shooter. T-Mac was a complete package. After a couple scoring titles and early playoff exits, he switched Orlando for Houston, where he hoped to win a championship alongside Yao Ming. Unfortunately, that's when the knee and back problems started. When the playoffs came, it was either Yao or McGrady on the injured list, and his title dreams seemed very distant. After the age of 28, T-Mac was a shell of his former eight-time All-Star self. There were no more off-the-backboard dunks or athletic jumpers that no defender could guard. He averaged only eight points per game in what were supposed to be his prime years, and he retired in 2013 after he watched the NBA Finals from the Spurs bench. Greg Oden After Sam Bowie, 
who also could have been on this list. Portland drafted another talented big man in front of a once-in-a-generation score. Odin's name will forever be linked with Kevin Durant, just like Bowie's will be linked with Michael Jordan. And even though KD won all the awards for National Player of the Year, it was Greg Odin who reached the NCAA Finals. He was the most dominant player in college basketball, an athletic 270-pound seven-footer who looked like a man amongst boys. There was a Shaq-like quality to the way he played, as he would often throw players around on his way to a monster jam, or swatting their shots like flies, averaging over three blocks per game. It was enough for the Trailblazers to select him first overall instead of Durant, and it quickly turned out to be a mistake, even though Odin showed flashes of college dominance during his rookie year. However, after playing only 21 games in his second season, it went from bad to worse. Odin had half of a healthy knee by the time he was 21 years old, and he never played for the Blazers again. He attempted a comeback with the Miami Heat in 2014, but it was obvious he can't move anymore. The next Shaq became one of the biggest busts, however unfair that is to say. Penny Hardaway Anthony Penny Hardaway was one of the best NBA point guards in the early and mid-90s. Six foot seven, fast, athletic. Penny flew over the court and could do everything scoring, dishing, rebounding, you name it, Hardaway was doing it. Owner of the most famous bobblehead in the history of the NBA, and some of the flashiest kicks, Penny was the star guard the NBA needed when Michael Jordan first retired. In his first four years in the league, Hardaway averaged 19.7 points, 4.6 rebounds, 6.7 assists, and two steals. He was a three-time All-Star and led Orlando to the 95 NBA Finals, along with Shaquille O'Neal and Horace Grant. In 1998, a devastating knee injury ended his season after 19 games, and he seemed washed when he returned. So Orlando traded him to Phoenix. The Arizona Sun did him well, and Penny started to resemble his old self, averaging 16.9 points, 5.8 rebounds, and 5.3 assists on 47% shooting. Then, at the age of 29, another knee injury forced him to miss out for almost the entire 2000-2001 season. Hardaway could never recover after that, and his athleticism was sapped. He turned from a star into a role player until he finally retired in 2008. Brandon Roy Another great Portland hope, and another career ruined by bad knees. Brandon Roy was the real deal, and before he got injured, he was on the trajectory to overtake Kobe and D-Wade as the best shooting guard in the game. After four years at the University of Washington, Roy was selected sixth overall in the 2006 NBA Draft, and he immediately stood out from the rest of his draft class. Averaging 16.8 points, 4.4 rebounds, and 4 assists per game, Roy deservedly won NBA Rookie of the Year, 127 out of 128 first-place votes. In the next three years, Roy further improved and polished his game and established himself as one of the league's best players, with three all-star selections and a well-rounded scoring and passing game. Portland offered him a max extension. Their investment was proven to be in vain. Any problems that have bothered Brandon since college started to add up. Because Roy had to remove a piece of cartilage, his knees were deteriorating at a fast rate. After three All-Star seasons, where he averaged over 20 points and 5 assists, his numbers dropped to 12.2 points and 2.7 assists. After that year, he decided to retire at the age of 27. The Timberwolves gave him another shot in the 2012-2013 season, but Roy's knees said no to basketball after only five games. Bill Walton after Kareem won three NCAA titles and all the individual accolades, nobody thought his success could be replicated, but Bill Walton came close. The red-headed center won three National Player of the Year awards, together with two NCAA titles. His UCLA Bruins won 88 games in a row during their championship runs, and in the 1973 Finals, Bill scored 44 points on 21 from 22 from the field, which is still regarded as the best game in NCAA history. Walton shot 65% from the field, averaging 20.3 points, 15.7 rebounds, and 5.5 assists at UCLA. And of course, he was the first pick in the draft. It was with him that Portland started its curse of drafting star players with long medical reports. His injuries started in his final year of college, and in his first two NBA seasons, they were just piling on. Walton began to have chronic feet issues, together with multiple mislocated toes, fingers, and broken wrists. Then, when he was finally healthy enough, Walton reminded everybody that he's one of the most talented centers ever. After a successful season as an all-star, Bill led Portland to their first and only title in 1977. He was named Finals MVP with averages of 18.5 points, 19 rebounds, 5.2 assists, and 3.7 blocks. 
He was then half healthy for one more year, and in the next four, he played a total of 14 due to consistent foot injuries. Everybody thought his career was over, but he did manage to squeeze in a few more decent years with the Clippers and the Celtics, where he won his second championship as a role player. If he had never sustained an injury, he would certainly be in the conversation for the best center ever. Derrick Rose I watched it live when Derrick Rose tore his ACL in the 2012 playoffs against Philadelphia. The NBA's brightest young star was battling injuries throughout that season, but it was clear that he was even better than he was in his 2011 MVP year. Maybe it was Thibodeau's grueling practice regimen and keeping his players in the game for far too long. Maybe it was just bad luck. Or maybe it was the Murphy's Law, which says that if you jump that high in the air enough times, after a certain number of good landings, there must be a bad one. D. Rose was the most explosive point guard in the history of the game, together with Russell Westbrook. And while Westbrook 100% recovered from his knee injury, Rose was never the same player. Even though he's still a good scorer, he's not a superstar, and he doesn't do anything vertically anymore. And I don't remember the last time he dunked the ball. Gilbert Arenas Before he first got injured, and before he starred in the Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels Washington Wizards edition, Nocho Gill was balling. From his second year in 2002 up until his final All-Star year in 2007, Arenas was averaging 24.4 points, 4.4 rebounds, and 5.7 assists. Agent Zero, aka Hibachi, was a hybrid between John Wall and Dame Lillard. He was one of the fastest guards with the ball and could fire it up from distance. For those of you that don't know, Gill dropped 60 on Kobe, who was first-team all-defense at the time. But then, his knees gave out on him. With injury, he also transformed from a gym rat into a party animal, and his career was never the same. He mustered one good season in 2011, but with the injuries and the gun incident, serious basketball was behind him. He peaked at the age of 25, when he averaged 28 and 6, and unfortunately, it was straight downhill after that. Honorable mention. There are plenty of guys we could also have mentioned here. Ralph Sampson, who was a consistent 20 and 10 guy in Houston before knee injuries shortened his career. Brad Doherty, who was a five time All Star in only eight years before his back forced him to retire at 28. Great careers that could have been even better and longer if it weren't for bad health also include Amare Stoudemire, Chris Weber, Chris Bosch, Larry Johnson, Pete Maravich, and some others. Let us know if we forgot somebody in the comments.